Hello and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Gemma. Now everyone I know seems to be going camping at the moment. It's really annoying because I haven't been camping for well, years actually, and I actually really love camping. I think I don't go because my husband doesn't really like it. <laughs> but anyway, I want to go camping because one of the things I love the most about camping is when you put your tent up, you've been through all that stress, you've got your camping chairs out, you've built your first fire, and you can relax with a marshmallow on a skewer ready to make delicious chocolatey melty s'mores. Like, that is the best. Um, and as you know, here at Crumbs and Doilies, we absolutely love s'moresing things. We have a ton of s'moresy things <laughs> on the Cupcake Gemma channel. And also, if you've got a copy of the Crumbs and Doilies book, you'll know we also have a couple of s'moresy recipes in there as well. And if you don't have a copy yet, we'll put a link to the um, cupcakegemma.com in the description box below. And don't forget, when you buy a book directly from us, you get a little bookmark, which gives you little vouchers for the shop. So that's a really great deal. But anyway, back to s'mores. I really wanted to do something s'moresy, but I needed to make it summery because it is still technically summer. So it had to be ice cream, a s'mores ice cream. So I'm gonna show you how to make a really delicious, creamy vanilla ice cream base and then pack it full with a delicious, rich chocolate sauce, some graham cracker inspired pie crumbs and some toasted marshmallows, obviously. So the first thing we need to do is make the ice cream base. And this is a really great vanilla ice cream base, which will be a good thing to know how to do because you can either keep it really plain or you can customize it however you want, but obviously we're gonna s'mores it up. So with most custard base ice creams, you wanna start with the egg yolks and the sugar. So I've got four egg yolks, I'm just going, or four eggs, I'm gonna separate those. And then I'm going to add 150 grams of caster sugar. And then using a balloon whisk, just give that a really good whisk until it's pale and fluffy. All right, that's looking good. It's lovely and ribbony, so that's ready. You can leave that to one side and get your milky cream mixture ready. So I've got a nice big saucepan here and I'm gonna put 550 grams of whole milk, 300 grams of double cream, and also for flavour, a teaspoon of good quality vanilla extract. Now you can also use um, a vanilla pod if you've got one, if you're lucky enough to have a vanilla pod. Uh, just make sure you scrape all the seeds out and then whack the pod in there as well for extra, extra flavour. But if you can't get hold of that, then you can get this from the cupcakegemma.com website. Very good stuff. And then also just a little pinch of salt just to bring out some of those flavours. And then that needs to go onto the hob. So I'm going to pop it over here and then just set that over a sort of medium heat. Give it a little stir as well every now and then. And you want to heat that until it's not quite bubbling. So the surface needs to be steaming and sort of undulating slightly. You don't want to get it to a boil. That's going to burn the, the, the cream mixture. As soon as it starts to do that and steaming, it's time to take it off. Then you need to temper your eggs so that they don't get all in a scramble. So you do that by grabbing a ladle full of the hot, milky, creamy liquid and just pouring it over the top of your eggs, whisking all the time. And that's just going to bring the temperature of the eggs up to nearer the temperature of the milk. So repeat that a couple of times just so that the eggs get nice and warm and then you can put that egg mixture back into your saucepan with the cream and milk and then put it back onto a medium low heat. Keep on stirring it for a few minutes and eventually it'll thicken up and when it's coating the back of a wooden spoon, it is ready, take it off the heat. And then just in case there's any lumps or any eggy bits, I always like to pour my um, custard through a sieve, just in case, get all those little bits and bobs out, into a container because this obviously is very hot right now, so it's not gonna make <laughs> ice cream very quickly, so it needs to cool down to room temperature, but it also needs to mature. Um, and I like to do that overnight, preferably, but you could probably get away with like six hours. Um, so make sure like with all custards or curds, you wanna put some cling film directly onto the surface of your custard and that will stop it from forming a unsightly skin. Put that there, and then just let that sit at room temperature before putting it into the fridge overnight. But lucky for everyone here, I've already done that in advance. I did it yesterday. So I actually have my chilled custard here in a Tupperware. It's identical. It's like it, it's like it was meant to be. So take off the cling film and you can already see it's sort of thickened up and got a lot sort of richer and creamier overnight. 
So this is gonna make a really, really delicious ice cream. Now, I really recommend um, using an ice cream machine for the best results. You'll get the smoothest ice cream that way. You can cheat it if you want by putting it into a container, putting it in the fridge for about an hour, and then getting out, giving it a little whisk, and then putting it back in the freezer, and then doing the same thing sort of every 20 or 30 minutes. And eventually, you will have, you'll get rid of some of those ice crystals with the whisk, and eventually you'll have something resembling an ice cream, but it isn't white as smooth. Um, so if you are in a position to use an ice cream machine, I highly recommend it. So just follow your manufacturer's instructions, guys. Um, I'm just going to pour all my custard into my little bucket. Lush. But anyway, I'm going to skip off to my little ice cream machine and I like to do mine for 50 to 60 minutes. I think that's just a good amount of time for a churn. But obviously, like I said, just refer to your manufacturer's instructions. Just whack the lid on, turn it on, set the timer, and away we go. So while my ice cream is churning away, I'm gonna get on with making all my bits and bobs so that everything's ready and I'm not in a mad panic at the end. So I'm gonna make some pie crumb and this is my new favorite pie crumb. This is a graham cracker pie crumb. So uh, we don't really have graham crackers here. It's really much more an American thing, but they're more wholemeal-y and a little bit of honey, a little bit of cinnamon. And the closest thing we have here is a digestive biscuit. Um, and actually, if you saw our, the re this recipe in the Guardian Feast a couple of weeks ago, I did use digestive biscuits and if you want to do that that's totally fine but I'm gonna just go ahead and make something a bit more exciting so I've got my gloves on because that's how I like to roll when I make my pie crumbs so I'm gonna start with my flowers I've got 50 grams of plain flour and 60 grams of wholemeal flour just pop that straight into a bowl and then add 25 grams of soft light brown sugar a pinch of sea salt and half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and then 60 grams of melted butter 10 grams of honey and one to two teaspoons of water you can start with one and see how you go and then I always start my pie crumb with a little spatula. You could use a, a fork or a spoon or whatever, but I like to start things off with my spatula before I get my hands in there, because that way I can see what it's feeling like. And once it's starting to come together in kind of nuggets, you can get your hands in there. And that's why I like to wear rubber gloves, because it's a bit of a messy job. And you can rub these between your fingers and thumbs, just breaking up any large nuggets. Um, and rubbing them through and sort of letting them fall through your fingers and eventually after a few minutes you're going to have a variety of sizes of nugget and they'll be all lovely and round. So once you're happy with your nugget size, sizes <laughs> you can bake them. So I've got a greased and lined pan here, just a baking tray and spread out all of your nuggets evenly over the surface of the pan. And then bake those at 170 degrees C for 10 to 12 minutes. You want them to be, obviously it's difficult to tell because they're slightly darker, but a bit more golden and then not like smushy to the touch. So while they're baking, I'm going to get my other bits ready. So there is a non-negotiable part of this recipe and that is fire and marshmallows because what is a s'more if it doesn't have those two things? So I've got these gigantic marshmallows here. I, I prefer using these just mainly for the novelty of it but if you want to just use regular ones that's totally fine. I would say don't use the really really mini ones because when you toast them they kind of just melt into a, like, a weird crispy blob and that's not great for your ice cream. So if you have these, cut them in half and if you don't have, if you've just got the regular sized ones they'll be fine whole. So just cut them in half and pop them onto something fireproof, um, sticky side up. And then I have my trusty best friend in the kitchen, <laughs> my blowtorch, one of my, as you know, one of my favourite things. Um, I just love getting my blowtorch on. So um, if you don't have a blowtorch, you can use a grill. I have done this under the grill. You just need to be really, really careful and literally leave it under a hot grill for like seconds but keep an eye on it because they do really melt very quickly. Anywho, light up your blowtorch if you can. There she goes. And then just waft that flame really gently over all of your marshmallows being really careful not to set anyone or anything on fire. The 
these are really hot, so obviously don't like go putting them in your mouth or touching them at the moment. But if you want to, when they're completely cool, you can transfer them to a bit of greaseproof paper just so they're not as sticky. So that's that bit done. My pie crumb has come out of the oven. It's looking real toasty. It smells really delicious and buttery and cinnamony and yummy. And then the last piece of the puzzle is this lovely chocolate sauce. Now, Again, if you saw the Guardian recipe, it was just melted chocolate in the recipe. And if you want to do that, that's totally fine. It'll make your life easier. But Dane decided that a better plan would be to use this lovely chocolate sauce. And this is something that I've been using for a really long time. We put it in some cupcakes here. Uh, I actually developed it just for ice cream. It's really nice because it doesn't freeze hard. It stays kind of soft in the scoop. So really, really lovely stuff. So all you need to do is put into a bowl 30 grams of dark chocolate. I'm using 70% chocolate here. 20 grams of cocoa powder and a pinch of salt and then just set that to one side. And then in a small saucepan, put 60 grams of double cream, 100 grams of golden syrup and 25 grams of caster sugar and then set that over a medium heat and give it a little stir every now and then and just bring it to a boil so as soon as it starts to bubble take it off the heat and pour it over the chocolate in the bowl and just let it sit there for about a minute to warm everything through and then grab yourself a whisk and give it a whisk until it's lovely smooth and glossy <laughs> it's churned look at that that looks like ice cream right but We've got to jazz it up, obviously, because it's not looking very smorzy right now. So I've got a tin or a container here, which I've actually had in the freezer um, just to help myself um, in terms of keeping things nice and cool. And now I'm going to start building things up. So I've got everything I need. I've got my um, chocolate sauce and a little piping bag here. I've got my toasted marshmallows and I've got my lovely pie crumb, which I've just been nibbling actually while, <laughs> while the ice cream's been finishing off. And now I'm going to get building. So. I'm gonna start by putting a third of the ice cream into my container. And I am sorry, everybody, but I, I've made ice cream a million times now and I still haven't worked out how to do this without making loads of mess. So bear with me, I'm gonna do my best, but it is not easy. I think it's because these buckets are so small. <laughs> I'm gonna blame the tools. Anyway, get yourself a third ooh, of that in and just make sure that's all spread out as much as possible across the bottom. Start by giving it a nice wiggle all over the top of this delicious chocolate sauce. You don't want to cover it completely. I mean, you can, it's up to you, but I like to just have a little bit every now and then. And then I'm going to carry on with my marshmallows. So these are big and they are very sticky, so this could be interesting. So I like to sort of dot them about, getting fairly good coverage all over the surface. And then lastly, of course, we've got our pie crumbs. So just grab yourself a little handful and scatter those all over the top, making sure you get in all those little holes, exposed holes. You want to get a, bite, a little bit of everything in every bite. And then once you've done one layer, carry on with the rest of your um, ice cream in thirds. And then finish off with a little drizzle of chocolate sauce and more pie crumb. And we're done, but it needs to freeze, guys. I'm sorry. I mean, you can eat this ice cream from the like get-go, but it's really runny. <laughs> it does need to be in the freezer for at least two hours to set completely. How cool does that look? This looks like a proper fancy pants Sunday. I need to get my spoon in there. Now I have really sensitive teeth so I I can only have a little bit at a time here otherwise my teeth go crazy. Mmm. -hmm. Oh I've got a bit of everything in that one. Yum. So good. I've got some of the toasty bouncy marshmallow really soft and yummy and then yummy little nuggets of pie crumb little buttery slightly cinnamony, crunchy little nuggets. This is one of my new favorite ice creams. You've got to give it a go. Make sure you take pictures if you do and hashtag us on Cupcake Gemma on Instagram and everywhere else, why not? Don't forget to pick yourself up a copy of the Crumbs and Doilies book because that has more s'mores action in it. Uh, and also we have a s'mores playlist if you can't get enough of s'mores and you just need more s'mores. S'more s'mores. And also if you're in the area, in the shop, why not 
grab a slice of S'mores Brownie, which is definitely one of Crumbs and Doilies' absolute like, top three biggest sellers of all time. We've been doing it for years and it's one of my favourites and it's going to be one of your favourites too. So head over there, grab yourself a slice and even if that's not available, just grab something else. Everything's good. Anyway, I'm going to eat my ice cream before it melts. It's already dangerously close, so I will see you later. Bye. Mmm.